four drivers will be eliminated today and four drivers will move on to Homestead, Miami to compete for the championship. Question is, who are those four going to be that are going to have their journey come to an end today? And who are those four that will be your championship contenders next week? We're going to find out at the conclusion of today's race number 19 of season five of the NCAA Pizza Hut X Series. Look over on the right side of your screen. You can see right there the eight drivers that are still in contention. And look just how close the points are from second down through eighth. Only 16 point separation. And here today at North Carolina Speedway, Rockingham Speedway, The Rock, whatever you want to call it, it's going to certainly be a wild one and play a huge factor into who our remaining four championship competitors will be. Now, one driver, Diego Yepes, you see, comes into this race with a 15-point advantage over the rest of his competition. Does that mean he's safe? Not necessarily. He's only 22 points ahead of that cut line currently held by Cat Batson. So if he has a struggling day here early, he retires out of the race, he could also find himself in danger of falling below the cut line. So the 19 team just needs to be consistent, and then they might be able to confirm themselves with maybe a top 15 finish as one of the four competitors this year. But how about Elijah Gilbert, former champion from season two, trying to become the first two-time champion of the series? Juan Garcia, he just raced his way into the top four after a solid performance last time out. And then you got Cat Batson currently in that uh, critical position of fourth, but only one point over James Shelley, two points over Phil Parker, seven over Eli Bright, and only a meager nine points over Zach Flickinger. So anyone from fifth on down through eighth still has an opportunity to get their way into the final four here today. Let's go down trackside and get the command. Drivers! Start your engines! Wyatt Quayle is going to start on the pole position for today's race. He will start alongside a former winner this season, Heather Gallant, who won earlier this year at Bristol Dirt. Highest starting playoff driver, James Shelley, rolling off from the outside of row two and fourth. And then right behind him in the next three rows, you've got Chasers. Top side of row three is Juan Garcia. Top side row four, Diego Yepes. And top side of row five, Cat Batson. So four of our eight championship competitors starting this race inside of the top 10. 50 laps of racing await us here today at Rockingham, North Carolina. We didn't see pit stops in yesterday's Coors Light Truck Series race because they were able to make it the scheduled distance on fuel. Not the case today. So if we go green all the way, we will see this race come down to green flag pit stops. Who's going to make their way into the final four to compete for the championship next week at Homestead? Rockingham about to let us know. Let's roll at the rock. Wyatt Quayle to the point, looking for his first career win. Here comes our Talladega race winner, Matt McIntyre, now moving for second place on Heather Gallant. Battle will be for second as Wyatt Quayle pulls out to about a three car length lead at the line. I think Gallant may have gotten McIntyre at the line. Nope, scoring said McIntyre by a splitter. Got the second position. Cat Batson up the up the racetrack, got into the wall there a little bit off turn two. May have made a little contact as well with fellow chaser Phil Parker. As I mentioned, a lot of our playoff contenders start on that outside line. Shelly Garcia, Yepes, Batson, Parker, they all started on the outside of their respective rows. And this is a track where the inside line is the preferred line. So all these drivers with the red banners and red splitters and red spoilers, they're wanting to get themselves down at the inside line ASAP. Right now, I'm not seeing any of them being able to do that just yet. They're still all on the outside lines as McIntyre is now finally going to clear Heather Gallant for the position. Cole Deaver in a good battle for fourth with uh, Carson Gum. Of course, Backmarker Motorsports getting their third driver to victory lane last week with uh, Charles Jackson going to victory lane. Carson Gum, the only driver out of that team that still needs a victory is, boy, there was a stack up back here or something. Are we under caution? We're under caution. Yellow flag is out, and I think maybe only fifth place got across the line before the yellow flag came out. And so all these drivers back here, they're pacing, but they're supposed to be racing back to the yellow flag. And there's the tail end of the field, drivers that were slowed up. Adrian Gonzalez back here, Kyle Langland. I think I saw Mason Wood there, and I don't know who brought the caution out, but it looked like only one set of skid marks there on the front straightaway, so probably something out of turn four. 
Now the leader, Wyatt Quail, is going to get picked up by the pace car. I don't think they'll pit, because I don't think even coming to pit road now would put them in their fuel window. But uh, Jackson winning last week at Texas. And keep in mind, too, last week at Texas and the week before at uh, Talladega, we didn't have any of our playoff contenders go to victory lane, so at this point, nobody of our championship eight are locked into the final four. Wyatt Quayle's going to lead us under this yellow. The last car right now is Andrew Gonzalez, and we got some drivers that are going to pit. Number of drivers actually coming to pit road, which surprises me. This is going to mean they'll be able to make it a little bit further on fuel, but I think they're still going to have to come to pit road before this race is over. Fuel window, I think, is somewhere around 40 to 43 laps, and we are right now at about 45 laps to go, so I don't think they're going to be able to make it. They'll at least be able to stay a little bit longer. Looks like the top five, top six decided to stay out, though. So we start with good starting track position, but everybody else behind them probably will have fresher tires. Let's go back and see what brought out the caution for the first time here today at Rockingham. Well, I mentioned the urgency of our playoff drivers trying to get down to the inside line. This is a clear case of why Diego Yepes stuck up on the outside three. Why going to get the wall? Contact from our Champs-Élysées winner, Quentin Moore, into Patrick Curtis. Right in front of last week's winner, Charles Jackson, Diego Yepes, who came into this race, the points leader, mentioned that he needed to avoid early trouble, and he got involved in this. He's also got some damage now on the uh, left side of his machine because of that contact with the 48 of Curtis. And somebody else spun further up. Oh, yeah, there's some somebody on the wall up there. Oh, that's the three of Brooke Allen. She went around, as does Angel Navarro in the 0-7. Just at, past the start finish line. Oh, looks like she uh, may have been trying to avoid the 19. Maybe came up into the path of the 07. Let's look here as they come to the start finish line. 19 is spun around. He didn't get hit by anybody else after his spin. Brooke moves up. And yeah, Angel Navarro was right there. Maybe a little contact there. Yeah, there was some contact with the right front for Chaser Elijah Gilbert. So we'll have to see how that affects him. Navarro comes back up the track. I don't think anybody hits him. Gene Sanford lets off the throttle, lets him back in line. But Brooke Allen spins out as well. Now, I don't know when the caution came out, if it came out before or after these drivers had crossed the start finish line. If it did, Brooke Allen would have been able to resume her spot in 26th, which is where she crossed the line. However, probably came to pit road with all the rest of those cars, probably repaired the damage, so that's probably not where she'll be restarting. So we basically had a spin out of turn four, and then we had an avoidance wreck heading down to turn one. Diego Yepes, the cause for the initial caution, and then contact between Brooke Allen and Angel Navarro after the caution came out. Green flags have to come out at lap nine of 50, so we're about a fifth of the way through this race. Nobody out of the race after what we just saw, so Wyatt Quayle restarts the leader. Second place, Matt McIntyre, Heather Gallant, third, Cole Deaver, fourth, and fifth is Carson Gum. This was a big break for a lot of those playoff contenders that were stuck in the outside line. Now they're going to line up single file. You've got Jessica Miles restarting sixth. Shelly still the highest ranked chaser seventh. Sky Commons, Carter Friesen, and Garrett Sidner restart as your top ten. Green flag back in the air. Shelly the only chaser in the top ten. Let's find out where your other uh, chasers are restarting. And Zach Flickinger is now up to 11th. Phil Parker restarted 14th. 16th for Juan Garcia. Cat Batson back in 19th. Elijah Gilbert back in 25th. Diego Yepes, after we saw that contact and that spin, he's back in the 34th position. And Eli Bright right now is scored in the 37th spot. It's kind of interesting. I was looking back over the uh, the history of the Pizza Deck series around this time of the season. This was actually the round back in season two that both James Shelley and Eli Bright got eliminated. They got eliminated in the round of eight. Caution's out for the second time today. I found that kind of interesting because both drivers came into this race behind the cut line. Wyatt Quayle going to have to line them up and do it again as we're under yellow for the second time today at Rockingham. Looks like an incident this time out of turn two, and it's Austin LaPlante. Ever since LaPlante got eliminated in the first round of the playoffs, things have not gone well for the driver out of Michael Norman Motorsports, and not going to go well here today. At Rockingham, two Michael Norman Motorsports cars involved. The rookie Andrew Davis also on pit road. Nick Gunther, our Phoenix race winner, 
on pit road and all just coming off pit road one of our championship competitors eli bright in the zero two three-time winner charles jackson last week's winner looks like he might have gotten some damage as well a little bit of right side damage maybe some front end damage on the klondike chevy camaro and everybody's going to come to pit road this time because i'm pretty certain this is the caution that puts everybody in their fuel window Leader Wyatt Quayle coming down. I thought I saw the 92 of Joshua Hyatt staying out, so we'll cover that in just a moment. But I believe now everybody will be good to go on fuel. They just needed the aid of a caution. They got it. And Jessica Miles wins the battle off pit road with James Shelley, Sky Commons, Garrett Sidner coming out third, fourth, and, and fifth place. Looks like it's Carter Friesen. So losing a lot of position is Wyatt Quayle. Now, if uh, Joshua Hyatt doesn't come to pit road, he'll restart the leader. But if he does... Jessica Miles will be the leader. We'll see what will be the case. Let's go back and see what happened. Austin the plan out of turn two. Well, our caution's going to start with last week's winner, Charles Jackson. Looks like he wanted to go to the inside of Chloe Erickson going into turn one, but he was actually the outside of Ian Canario. Slides up the track, gets into the left rear quarter panel of the 46. That gets him out of shape, sends him down into the path of rookie Andrew Davis, and both of them are going to go around and up into the outside safer barrier there in turn two. Oh, Rob Evans in the 88 is going to get involved. There is Angel Navarro. There's LaPlante and Nick Gunther as well. Nowhere for them to go. Oh, Jake Rogers gets a piece. Brooke Allen sent up into Nick Gunther. Gunther going to hit the wall again. Ryan George up there against the wall. I don't know if he made contact with Davis or not. Now, I'm kind of interested up here because there's that bright blue 0 2 of. One of our playoff contenders and Eli Bright, he got through the wreck. And yet we saw him coming off pit road. So does something happen further up here? Or was it just that he maybe came to pit road? Let's see. Okay, he's going to go down on the apron going here into three. Oh, and does he come back up the track? Oh, that's another playoff contender in Diego Yepes. Sideswipes the 19 up the track and right in front of the 55. Well, Eli Bright is the only driver this season that has at least more than one win. Three in total. Everybody else that's won's only won once. That was some pretty significant contact to the back of his race car. And remember, he comes into this race outside that cut line, seven points back behind Cat Batson. He was able to continue, but that car could be off the pace after that heavy-duty contact from Nick Gunther. And so it looks like the second of our playoff contenders to encounter problems today is the Pepsi Next Ford of three-time winner Eli Bright. And more developments going on here as sitting on pit road is the 95 of Juan Garcia who came into this race third in the points. He's currently scored 37th and he is currently, I believe, at least one lap down, maybe now two. Joshua Hyatt did decide to stay out, so he will restart the leader. Second place is going to be Jessica Miles. Third highest running chaser, still James Shelley. Fourth is Guy Commons. Fifth is Garrett Sidner. Sixth place is going to be Carter Friesen. Seventh, Heather Gallant. Eighth place is going to be Jay Jefferson. Ninth, Quentin Moore. And Patrick Curtis will complete the top ten. You see Eli Bright lining up on the inside line. He's one lap down, along with uh, Joshua Hyatt. Also a lap down, Juan Garcia, and we've got three cars out of the race. Rob Evans, Nick Gunther, and Austin LaPlante after the wreck we just saw. I went back and looked at our previous winners. We The past four seasons ran here at Rockingham. Three of those years, seasons one, three, and four. Season one, the winner was Kermica Jazzen. Season two, the winner was Ashlyn Boyd. And guess who the defending winner of this race is? He's running third, chaser James Shelley. Green flag back in the air. We're back underway here at Rockingham. It's like uh, Andrew Davis is definitely off the pace. I couldn't tell if Eli Bright was trying to get around him or not. Garrett Sidner gets the wall off turn two. Eli Bright just hoping and praying some other playoff contenders run into some issues. As up front, Joshua Hyatt shows the way. Let's see where some of our other playoff contenders are right now. As we have not even reached the halfway point and already worked our second caution. All oh, this is really congested back here. Quentin Moore up the middle trying to get by Andrew Davis. There's Phil Parker in the 31. As Davis gets the wall and there he goes. Down towards the inside wall and they're still wrecking Cat Batson's in it. Juan Garcia got into the back of Jackson. There's Cat. 
Allen, Langland, Rowe, and Navarro. And another championship competitor involved, and this driver came in, the cut line driver, Cap Batson. Jackson's on pit road, Onda Baranska's on pit road as the race leader has already taken the caution. And right there, that contact and that damage you saw that Cap Batson had, that might be what uh, someone like Eli Bright's looking for. Someone's smoking with gray smoke up here, I think. Or maybe not, maybe it was somebody that's already come to pit road. And Joshua Hyatt's giving up the race lead, so remember we saw him stay out under the last caution. Now they're coming to pit road so they can make sure they make it the rest of the way. Jessica Miles leads us now under the yellow flag. Let's go back and see what happened out of turn two. Looked like it started with the five of Andrew Davis. You just kind of knew when you saw him get up into the wall and he's trying to hang on to it that something was going to happen. He gets down into the 29 of Mark Davidson, back into the wall again, and this time off the nose of Matt McIntyre. McIntyre, though, was able to actually get below him, and what a nice avoidance by playoff contender Zach Flickinger. And then further back, they just started stacking up and running over each other. I think that was Langland running over Brooke Allen, who then got into the back of Cat Bats, and Daniel Olson got involved there in the 32. Flying in comes Angel Navarro. He clobbers Kyle Langland. And then Andre Baranskas clobbers uh, Alex Rowe in the 69. And I'm pretty certain the 95 of uh, Juan Garcia, who's already off the lead lap, ran into the back of Charles Jackson. So he's got more damage on his machine as well. And they're just all piled up here. Looks like Alexander Rose Day is done after that huge hit that he got. Kyle Langley with a lot of damage. Two of the uh, Gardner Motorsports, or Fitzwater Australia Motorsports cars, rather, involved in this one. Brooke Allen, second caution. She's been involved here today. Same for Angel Navarro. We're under yellow for the third time today. Haven't even reached lap 20 at Rockingham. And this just shows you that even though we've got eight drivers that are battling for a championship here, we've got another 34 drivers in this field that all want to win, and they feel track position is so important, especially now with the fact they all know they can make it on fuel. Jessica Miles is going to be the leader when we go back green. We'll see if we get the lights out of top of the pace car this time, and as we wait for that, let's update the drivers that have recently retired. After that wreck, right now, only three in total have retired. Angel Navarro, Kyle Langland, and Alexander Rowe. They join Rob Evans, Nick Gunther, and Austin the Plan in the garage area. So, so far, none of our eight championship drivers have retired out of the race. Lights out, top paced car. We'll go back green next time by. Jessica Miles, the leader, over James Shelley, Sky Commons, Garrett Sidner, and Heather Gallant. That's your top five. Carter Friesen, Jay Jefferson, Patrick Curtis, Cole Deaver, and Wyatt Quayle. That's going to be your top 10. Shelly still the only playoff driver inside the top 10. Let's see where the rest of them are currently at. Phil Parker up there in 11th. He's making a clear case for himself to make it into the final four. Elijah Gilbert's worked his way now up to 15th. Got to go ways down, though, before he finds Zach Flickinger there in 22nd. He's the last driver in the playoffs. He needs to make it up there. Diego Yepes with his damage still on the lead lap. 26th where he restarts. Kat Batson in 29th will document her as she's gotten damage after that last wreck. And then your other two playoff contenders are off the lead lap. Eli Bright 32nd one lap down and Juan Garcia 33rd one lap down. They're going to restart alongside the leader Jessica Miles. We'll see if that 0-2 is up to speed here. Maybe he can race his way around the 25 get back in the lead lap. There's the answer to the question, not able to even close get up through the gears. And it's going to remain off the lead lap. Looks like the top two at least going to get around the lap traffic. Miles and Shelley, Sky Commons, great run for the rookie now up in third. Garrett Sidner trying to get by Juan Garcia for what would uh, not be track position, but now he's under fire for a position. Heather Gallant to the inside for fourth place. Looking back here, I don't like the look of this. Is there three wide again? That's Jay Jefferson way up top. Hopefully he doesn't brush the wall off turn two. Looks like we're going to get through here pretty well. Carter Friesen in the middle. Cole Deaver down low. And also Phil Parker there in the 31. Came into this race two points behind the cut line. He's running better than Cat Batson right now and better than Juan Garcia. So right now Phil Parker would be in to the final four. If I were to make an educated guess based on where drivers are currently running, I would say your final four competitors heading into Homestead right now would be Diego Yepes, Eli Bright, James Shelley, and Phil Parker. But we have to see about the 22 and the 19 where they're in relation to each other, and we're going to get a caution to be able to find that out. Yellow flag is out for the fourth time today, and we still haven't reached the halfway point of this race. 
Incident on the back straightaway heading into the entrance of turn number three. You can see there looks like two drivers at least involved in this one. Ryan George on the pit lane. Mason Wood off the pace. Gene Sanford's got some damage. So it looks like maybe both of the Joanna Atwood Motorsports Chevy Camaros might have been collected up in this one. Jessica Miles, in another lap, she won't have to defend the race lead under green. She'll continue to lead us under yellow. Let's go back and see what happened. You can just tell through turns one and two whether a car is going to hit the wall out of turn two or not, depending on how high they run in that outside groove. And Gene Sanford was definitely way outside the groove. Into the wall she goes, across the nose of Nathan Hudson, gets sent down into Ryan George. He's the one that clobbers the inside safer barrier, and she also clips the right rear of her teammate Mason Wood spinning him around. Gene's going to get a little tap into that inside wall, but not nearly as significant as the uh, Pittsburgh Steelers Camaro did. And that's going to bring out the caution. It's more towards the rear of the field than anything. Not a whole lot of drivers behind the wreck, and everybody for the most part got through. It was basically, uh, I guess for the most part, three cars involved, but we also should count Nathan Hudson into it. And it's another caution that has us under pacing, Four cautions in the first 25 laps here at Rockingham. This is turning into a wreck fest, much like we saw in yesterday's Truck Series event. Well, right now, based on where they're running, James Shelley and Phil Parker, second place for the 71, eighth place for the 31, they would be into the final four. Elijah Gilbert came into this race uh, inside of the top four. He's in 16th, so right now he is in good shape. I think the battle right now is going to be between... Uh, the 19 of Diego Yepes and the 22 of Cat Batson. Now, those two came into this race separated by 22 points, though. Right now, Yepes is running in 20th. Cat Batson's back in 23rd. So right now, for Cat Batson to make it into the final four, I think she needs the 71 or the 31 or the 66 to run into some issues. Number of our playoff contenders have run into issues here today. Juan Garcia still trapped a lap down in 30th. Right now, Cat Batson is running ahead of him by a total of seven positions, and she was only, uh, what was it, three points behind him coming into this race. James Shelley and Phil Parker, obviously, they're definitely ahead of him by more than uh, four or seven points, four to seven points, which is where they both were roughly at behind the 95, so right now he would be eliminated. Eli Bright's been struggling today. He's a lap down in 31st, and he was 7th of the 8 championship competitors. And Zach Flickinger came into this race 9 points behind the cut line, and he really hasn't made a whole lot of strides up towards the front. Still mired back in 17th. For that driver, I know 17th sounds like a pretty good performance, and obviously he's avoided the wrecks, but with where he's positioned in points and where other drivers currently are running, he needs to be up inside of the top 10. So we'll see if the 96 makes any progress here. That's right now, as I said, my calculations have Yepes, Gilbert, Shelley, and Parker as your final four heading to Homestead, but that could change because still we have the second half of this race left to go. After that incident, none of the drivers involved out of the race as the green flag back in the air with a total of 23 laps remaining. Juan Garcia looks like he might be uh, up to speed. He's actually going to challenge to get back on the lead lap and... Now he's going to hope and pray for a quick caution. Look at James Shelley down there. He's going to try and use the lap car to try and take the lead. Oh, boy, it looks like Juan Garcia not quite with the straightaway speed that he needs, though, and that might hold the 71 up just the least little bit. Sky Commons trying to go around the outside for second, and he's going to succeed in doing so. Three wide further back, that's Mark Davidson. He gets it to Andrew Davidson. They're gonna go into the wall and that's gonna bring out another caution. Fifth time today, the yellow flag waves at Rockingham and it came just a little too late for Juan Garcia. He will still be trapped off the lead lap. Sky Commons though managed to use the outside line to move to second. Now he's on the back bumper of the 25 Commons was a winner in the Coors Light Truck Series last season. Now looking for his first career win in the Pizza Hut X series. And there's Gene Sanfer and Alex Gray on pit road. I know the wreck started with the 29 and the five, which, correct me if I'm wrong, when Andrew Davis wrecked out of turn two a couple of cautions ago, he bounced off of the 29 of Mark Davidson. So that's kind of ironic. And there are those two that I just mentioned, the five and the 29. 
And Gonzalez has got right side damage, but I think he's been involved in a couple of wrecks here today, so that might not necessarily be from this wreck. And as we're under the caution once again, we'll have less than 20 to go when we go back green. Let's see what brought out our fifth caution of the day at Rockingham. Up, oh, same song, second verse, or in this case, maybe the fifth verse. Mark Davidson kicked up to the high side three wide. Up out of that dark gray groove, car is going to slide up into the wall and right down into the right side of Andrew Davis. Spins the five car around, and oh, a couple of cars got a piece of that one. Matt McIntyre in the nine, Quentin Moore the 89. Look at Zach Flickinger up on the top side, just get through. Oh, there's where Alex Gray gets a piece of it. Hard hit into the inside wall as well, and there's Gene Sanford collected as well. Diego Yepes managed to make his way through, but I just noticed he lost quite a bit of track position after that one. Drivers that run ahead of him, like Cat Batson and uh, Zach Flickinger, so he's not going to exactly be where he wants to be lining up for this restart. So Diego Yepes putting himself in a bit of a precarious position here after having to slow up for that wreck, and he wasn't even really running with good starting track position after, uh, prior to that anyway. Yellow flag for the fifth time today. Let's go back for yet another restart. And if you didn't tune in to yesterday's Coors Light Truck Series race, this is exactly the way that that race went. Where these drivers, you know, they would put on a pretty good show, but they'd race so aggressively and get three wide coming off of the corners that you'd see them hit the wall, getting out of the groove, and it would cause the wrecks. I'm trying to even remember. I don't. We had like a green flag run maybe for the final seven laps of that race. So we're probably in for a couple more cautions here. Jessica Miles continues to lead, though. And these cautions are definitely helping the drivers in case they were close on fuel. They're able to clutch. They're able to shut off the engines, save fuel here. There's no doubt in my mind now they will not have to come to pit road for the remainder of this race. Lap cars will line up in the inside line again because we haven't yet reached 10 laps to go for the restart. It's Jessica Miles over Sky Commons now. Garrett Sidner up to third. James Shelley got caught behind the slower lap machine of Juan Garcia on that last run. He's now back in fourth. Heather Gallant in fifth. Patrick Curtis, Cole Deaver, Phil Parker, Carter Friesen. And our pole sitter, Wyatt Quayle, will restart your top 10. Elijah Gilbert's up in 13th place now. So making a better case for himself to make it into the playoffs. Zach Flickinger in 18th. And right now, Kat Batson's up in 19th place. So she's trying to fight her way up towards the top 10 and deny maybe James Shelley or Phil Parker an opportunity of making it into the final four. Diego Yepes is back in 22nd place, and then we've still got our two playoff contenders trapped a lap down. Juan Garcia now up to 28th, and Eli Bright now in 29th after the zero of Alex Gray took his car back behind the wall. Green flag back in the air here. 27, I'm sorry, 17 rather, laps to go. Miles clears the lap traffic. Commons not so lucky. Tried to get around the outside of Juan Garcia. Garcia battles back on the inside. Couple of cars got the wall that time out of turn two. Wyatt Quayle and Carson Gum. Looks like they got through the back straightaway though safely. As now Garrett Sidner in third. He's in a battle for third. James Shelley now under fire for fourth from Heather Gallant as they try and make their way around the slower lap machine. Car on pit road, I believe that was the three of Brooke Allen. That car has been making multiple pit stops during the course of this race, just trying to stay out of the way of the leaders. Now the top four, make it top six, will be clear of lap traffic as Patrick Curtis moves by the 95, and the caution is out again. Caution for the sixth, seventh, I've lost count time today, and it's again another incident out of turn two. Well, people call this Rockingham, and yesterday I coined that race as Wreckingham, and I think today is exactly the same way. And we saw Carson Gum got into the wall earlier on that last restart. Looks like he might have hit it again, and looks like he might have taken the 89 of Quentin Moore with him. Let's take a look and see what happened. Another yellow flag here as we're nearing 10 to go, but I'm pretty sure we'll get back green before that point. And the reason I'm anxious for us to get to 10 to go is then we'll actually have everybody lined up single file. They'll be less anxious to try going three wide like we see them off this corner here. Elijah Gilbert actually up there as well. He got the wall, but he doesn't spin out. Carson Gum does. Collects Jake Rogers, and that's, I think, the second or third time Nathan Hudson's been the car behind someone that's hit the wall and ended up being the one that turns them. 
So Hudson's not been having a very good day. Carson Gum last time by was scored in 17th. A number of these drivers are running up just uh, inside or just outside of the top 20. Rogers now with damage, and Nathan Hudson, like I said, second time that I can think of that he's actually been the car that's gotten into the left rear quarter panel of someone that's gotten into the wall off turn two. So Carson Gum brings out the yellow flag for the I've lost count time today. Let's uh, go back to green. Hope and pray it's with 10 to go, but I have a feeling we're going to have that lap traffic on the inside line once again. Well, I've been noticing that James Shelley, little by little, continues to fall back. Phil Parker doing the same. And who does that fall into the hands of? The 22 of Kat Batson, because she came into this race one point ahead of Shelley and two points ahead of Phil Parker. Now, as these two, Shelley and Parker, are starting to fall back in the running order, Kat Batson's actually moving up. She's up to the 15th spot, so she's just got to get herself in the vicinity of those two. And she might be able to squeak her way into a final four position. Diego Yepes has also worked his way up to the 16th spot. So right now the driver in trouble could be the 66 of Elijah Gilbert that we saw get into the wall. He's back in the 20th position. Now he came into this race ahead of James Shelley by 8 points and Phil Parker by 9 points. Shelley's running in 5th, so he needs that for Gilbert to finish 14th or worse. Phil Parker is running 10th. He needs for Elijah Gilbert to finish in 20th or worse. And right now, that's where Gilbert is running. So Gilbert right now would be out. So our final four at this point in time would be Yepes, Batson, Shelley, and Parker if the standings were to be as they are right now. But when we restart, there will be a total of 11 laps to go. So we'll see if anything changes and if the 66 can make up some ground. If he is able to, then he would actually displace, I believe, Phil Parker out of the final four. Got that lap traffic on the inside line again there. Juan Garcia, Eli Bright, Ryan George, Andre Baranska. So this is not necessarily the last time we've seen the caution. I can expect these drivers to maybe try and go three wide again like they've done all race long. Green flag back in the air. Jessica Miles has enjoyed the view out in front. Has really had not to contend uh, for the race lead much today. As the battle is on for second, Garrett Sinner to the inside, and we got trouble in the back. Wyatt quails around, he's taking Phil Parker with him. Oh, they saved it, I think. No caution, no caution, they saved it. And the caution now is out. They had it saved, and that might have taken Phil Parker out of the final four. Wait, are we under caution? We are under caution, yeah. They didn't save it, I guess. I thought they had it saved, it looked like it. Wyatt Quayle and Phil Parker down towards the inside wall, and it looked like they got it straightened out. But like I was saying, that might have just taken Phil Parker out of the uh, Final Four equation here, depending on where he fell back to now. Daniel Olsen's on pit road, and Diego Yepes, I think, got a piece of that one. Second caution that he's been involved in. And we will finally get a restart with less than 10 to go. So maybe, just maybe, with a single file restart, we'll be able to finish this race under green. Don't know how many laps we'll have, though. As now Garrett Sidner is the new second place driver that Jessica Miles will have to contend with. Former driver that was in the final four in the Hershey's Cup Series at one point, Garrett Sidner. So let's go back at a replay and come back for hopefully will be a restart to the checkered flag. Well, we saw the... Incident into the wall with Wyatt Quayle. There it is, left side of your screen. He's going to come down into Phil Parker. They're going to go down to Andrew Davis. At this point, no caution, still no caution, still no caution. They hit the wall. They get it straightened. Still no yellow, but then Wyatt Quayle cannot keep the car from coming back up the track. Gets last week's winner, Charles Jackson, Jay Jefferson, as well as the front of the 19 of Diego Yepes. And Elijah Gilbert had to slow up for that as well. So he lost a lot of track position in the in the 66. 19 there as well, you see, with damage. Oh, Phil Parker there into the 32. And then, oh, Joshua Hyatt trying to squeak his way through. Gets clipped in the left rear quarter panel. He's going to get spun around as well. But Yepes gets involved, Gilbert gets involved, and this makes it very interesting because I noticed that a driver, Zach Flickinger, just moved his way into the top 10 after this wreck. So right now, it may be a battle between Diego Yepes and Kat Batson, and maybe a battle between Elijah Gilbert and Zach Flickinger for spots in the Final Four. 
We should get the one to green this time, which means we will get the restart with seven, I'm sorry, with six laps to go. Hopefully, we run those six laps under green. Jessica Miles, the leader. Garrett Sidner, second. Third is Heather Gallant. Fourth is Sky Commons. James Shelley keeping his playoff hopes alive. He's up in fifth. Then it's Cole Deaver, Patrick Curtis, Carter Friesen, Matt McIntyre, and we mentioned Zach Flickinger up in 10th place. So two of our chase drivers right now in the top 10. Then you got Cat Batson up there in 12th. She came in the cut line driver, rising to the occasion, trying to make it into the final four. She's in the top 15. Then you got to go quite a ways down before you find Phil Parker. He's got a little bit of damage, but he's back in 20th position. Then in the last cars on the lead lap that are in the chase are Elijah Gilbert 24th and Diego Yepes back right now in the 26th position. This makes it very, very interesting there. Eli Bright and Juan Garcia still trapped the lap down 27th and 29th. They're praying for a miracle. Right now, their chances of making it into the final four looking very, very slim. And one of the strongest cars during the chase, Eli Bright, for the second time in his career, looks like he may be eliminated in round number two. Green flag back in the air for Jessica Miles with six laps to go. We restarted single file. The lap cars integrated with the lead lap cars. There you see Sky Comets, James Shelley making their way around Juan Garcia, who started fourth, even though that's not where he's currently at. We got a battle for the lead. Garrett Sidner makes the first challenge in a long time to the 25. He's gonna take the top position out of turn four. And we completed a lap under green. Maybe, just maybe, this race will go green to the end. Heather Gallant's gonna move into second. Gallant looking for her second win of the season after getting the first win at Bristol Dirt. She's on the back bumper of the Dr. Pepper Chevrolet. Flying Aces Racing looking for their first win of the season in the Pizza Hut X Series. Neither Sidner nor Jade Jefferson have been able to find victory lane up to this point. Gallant, ooh, right on that left rear quarter panel going into turn one. Not gonna make the move though. I just noticed that Zach Flickinger's actually fallen outside of the top 10. Look who's moving in towards the top 10. Cat Batson. 12th place last time by. So the 22 looking like she's in good shape to make it into the playoffs. Flickinger might be in danger. Let's drop back here real quickly. Elijah Gilbert's up in 21st. Yepes in 19th. Well, now he's back in 22nd. Gilbert back in 20th. But one driver that wasn't up here is Phil Parker in the 31. So Parker might be making an exit. Shelley's losing some spots now. He was fifth last time by. He's now going to drop back, looks like, to around the seventh position. Up front, Heather Gallant took the lead from Garrett Sidner with two laps to go. Sidner trying to battle back, but boy, Garrett's losing some ground right now to the 81. Heather Gallant was a two-time winner last year when she made the playoffs in the Coors Light Truck Series. Now looking to be a two-time winner in the Pizza Deck Series. We're still green, and the white flag is out, so we will race back to the checkers. Gallant, just a few weeks ago, took her first win at one of the toughest short tracks on the circuit, the dirt track covered half-mile Bristol. They call this track one of the toughest tracks on tires, and the rookie is going to rise to the occasion. Heather Gallant will be a two-time winner in her rookie season, the Pizza X Series. She'll take the checkered flag here today at Rockingham. Sidner will bring it home second, Miles third, Commons in fourth, fifth for Curtis, and James Shelley, we know at least for certain, is one of the drivers that will be in the final four competing for the championship. Who is he getting joined by? I would say definitely Cap Batson, who finishes in 12th. Diego Yep has finished 19th, so I think he's in. So now it's down to that final position. Elijah Gilbert finishes in 17th. And drivers that were trying to run him down finish behind him. Juan Garcia and Phil Parker. Parker finishes back in 24th. Garcia 26th. I believe your final four heading into the playoffs contention for the championship next week at Homestead are going to be Yepes, Gilbert, Shelley, and Batson. Two Fords, two Chevys, two of those, she those two Chevys, teammates out of Backmarker Motorsports, and one of them, a former champion, looking to become a two-time champion in the Pizza Hut X Series. Standings are official. How about Heather Gallant? 
had a great season last year in the tax or in the then tax layer truck series, now course light truck series. And now this year makes the move up to Pizza Deck Series and is a two-time winner and joins Eli Bright as the only driver to have gone to Victory Lane multiple times this season. Sidner so close to getting Flying Aces racing their first win of the season, but came up short. Jessica Miles dominated this race with the aid of multiple cautions, but she's going to have to settle for third. Sky Commons, second highest finishing rookie in fourth. Curtis fifth. Shelley brings home in sixth, good enough to make it into the final four for the first time in his career. Cole Deaver in seventh. Yin Canario, great run for the driver, dead last in points. He gets eighth. Chloe Erickson, we really didn't talk about the 46 today. Great run in ninth. And Carter Friesen, the only third rookie to finish in the top ten as he will get the tenth position. You look on down through the finishing results there. Cap Batson, that was enough for her to get in, I believe, 12th place. Zach Flickinger, 13th. A great performance for him, but he came into this race uh, nine points behind the cut line, and a number of the drivers he needed to run down finished better than him, or at least just a little ways behind him, so I don't think that this effort's going to get him into the final four. Quentin Moore there in 14th place, Mason Wood 15th, Hudson, after his troubles today, he gets 16th, Elijah Gilbert brings it home in 17th, and he was seven points ahead of the cut line, so I believe he is going to be in. And then you got Diego Yepes finishing 19th, and he was 22 points ahead of the cut line. He just basically needed to finish in the top 25 today. He managed to finish in the top 20. And then some drivers that just got into some struggles, either early or late in this race. Got Phil Parker got involved in that last caution. He finishes 24th, and he was only two points behind the cut line, but he's going to finish uh, too far down to be able to be in the final four. And then Juan Garcia and Eli Bright, a couple of teammates out of Srigley Motorsports, they got involved in some incidents early on, got trapped a lap down, and never were able to get themselves back on the lead lap. They finished 26th and 28th. Garcia was only three points ahead of the cut line, and James Shelley definitely finished ahead of him, as did Cat Batson. So he fell out of the top four, I do believe, and Eli Bright came into this race nine points, or I'm sorry, seven points behind the cut line, needed a much better run than 28th place. You look on down at the drivers that finished out of the race, 35th on down, Jackson Gray, Navarro, Langland, Rowe, Evans, Gunther, and LaPlante, but none of our championship eight finished behind the wall in today's race. Each one getting involved in wrecks and whatnot, getting some damage, still realized there was a championship on the line and continued on hoping that maybe they might be able to luck their way into the final four. But it looks like the official final four are going to be the 19 of Diego Yepes, the 66 of former champion Elijah Gilbert, the 71 of James Shelley, and the 22 of Cat Batson, trying to pull off a Cody Lamas story from last year. Hope you guys enjoyed today's race. If you did, be sure you guys like, subscribe, and compare the crew today. We've shown you full page results, these your rookie points, and your overall points. The four drivers highlighted in yellow are your four playoff drivers that are moving on to the round of four, the final four, to compete for the championship in the season finale at Homestead Miami Speedway. We still got to determine the final four for the Hershey's Cup Series drivers, and that's going to be taking place here tomorrow. Four drivers move on. Four drivers get eliminated. You're not going to want to miss it. Till then, out of Cole, and you've been watching Production 8 Offline Racing at its best.